In just a second, I'm gonna give you my top four assertive communication tips to speak up for yourself when you want something and learn to say no when you don't. But first off, I wanna share with you my own personal story around this, why it's so vital to your happiness to learn how to become assertive and why I wish I learned it way earlier. So credit where credit is due. The inspiration from this video comes from many of Jordan Peterson's videos, a book called Radical Honesty by Brad Blanton and two different TED Talks. The first called How to Speak Up for Yourself by Adam Galinsky and the second called The Art of Saying No by Kenny Wynn. So real quick, before we get into this video, there are timestamps down below to navigate and there are also links to products that I recommend. Some of those links might be affiliate links, but that's a cool free way for you to support the show if you were gonna pick up one of the books anyway. So my own story starts as a kid and my dad was an intellectual and an emotional tyrant in a lot of ways, which means that if you would speak up for yourself or if you would say no to him when you wanted to disagree with an idea, it would always be spun in such a way where you were being you know, rude, cruel, uh, where you were being uh, an idiot, where you were being intellectually inferior. There was always some negative spin, no matter what the rationale or the ideas involved in the conversation were, if you disagreed with him. This led to me learning how to not rock the boat, how to not bring up things that mattered to me. So I would essentially be emotionally distant and keep conversations very surface level where nothing was really meaningful. So I wasn't in a position of having to disagree and end up with conflict or agree and end up essentially stifling myself. Fast forward a few years or a decade and now I'm in college and when you're in college there's a bunch of 19, 20 year old guys who are all like jacked up, lots of testosterone, lifting weights, chasing girls, drinking and going to parties. There's a lot of conflict. And so I was a pretty mild mannered, easygoing guy usually, at least I think so. But I would always, or I would very frequently bottle up my feelings and after two or three months of that, explode in a totally unacceptable and disproportionate way on a friend. The most traumatic one of these and the moment that solidified in my mind that I needed to do something about this and learn to be assertive in a productive, good way was when I absolutely raged on a friend of mine for almost no reason. So he'd been picking at one of my insecurities for like a month or two, but it wasn't such a big deal. But after he'd been doing this for a few months, we went to a party and we were both drinking, obviously, because parties. Um, and then he did something like that. He said something like that in front of a group of people that only I would know was a dig. And he did mean it because he like he said it at me with a kind of a smirk. And so I, being an animal at the time, Spartan kicked him in the chest as hard as I could, launched him backwards, and when he started complaining about it, poured my beer on his face. <laughs> um, and I feel pretty bad about it even now, but it's kind of funny in a way how absurd my reaction was. But I say all that to say this, if you don't learn to set boundaries in relationships and advocate for yourself when you need something, if you don't learn to be assertive, then passive aggression or actually exploding and real aggression or um, just general conflict is the only outcome for your relationships. But if you learn to be assertive and you learn to do it correctly, it shows that you have enough emotional intelligence to understand the difference between being a bully, being a pushover and being assertive right in the middle. And that emotional intelligence is attractive to everyone around you and it leads to more satisfaction inside yourself. My first tip is just to increase your self-awareness. You know, if you don't understand what you want out of a situation, if you don't understand what you need, how can you expect to communicate it to anybody else? So in order to increase your self-awareness, there's three big things that I'm recommending. First off, you've got to understand your own needs. And the way that you can do this is just looking inside yourself, seeing what upsets you, what moments were you super upset? Because typically a moment when you're upset will reveal that you either need to ask for something that isn't happening or you need to set a boundary around something unacceptable, which is. Second off, you've got to get some perspective on yourself from a distance. And you can do this by thinking about what other people say about you, either to your face or through the grapevine. You can get this also by imagining that you're looking at yourself as a third party, like you were looking at a movie. You know, Joe Rogan has a video called like, be your own hero or something like that. But in this video, he essentially says, if you observed your life as if it were a movie, how would you change your actions? And the same can be said if you're looking at, if I observe my actions in my day-to-day -day life, as if I was watching a movie, 
how would I be more assertive in key moments? And my third tip comes directly from Adam Galinsky's TED talk that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, and it's called like the power levels or the low power double bind. The idea being that every relationship dynamic has a power balance. And depending on how much power you have in any given interaction, if you're the CEO of the company versus the entry level guy, if you're the leader of your friend group versus the guy that just kind of sits and is a wallflower, wherever your power level is in the dynamic, leads you to having either a lot of acceptable behaviors, a wide variety, or a very narrow variety. And so if you have low power, and you're the new guy on the block, you're the small man at the company, whatever, you have a very narrow bandwidth of acceptable behavior, which leads you to the low power double bind, which means that if you don't assert yourself, people are gonna keep standing on you, you're gonna keep feeling bad about yourself, and it's miserable. But if you do assert yourself, then you're getting too big for your britches and you're actually stepping on people's toes and um, overstepping your boundaries. We'll get into how to handle this in a moment. My second tip is to have more self-respect. And that's not a very actionable tip. So here are kind of four sub tips. First off, on a basic human level, recognize that you at least deserve to be treated as a human and that you deserve to be treated as well as any other human because of the virtue that you are one. Second off is keep a mental Rolodex of why you deserve whatever it is that you're asking for. You know, I remember I used to do a lot of public speaking and when I was first starting, I always thought, you know, who the hell wants to hear from me? I don't know anything, I'm not interesting, I'm a crap public speaker. And some of those things might have been true. But an old lady recommended that I keep a notebook in my pocket and write down all the compliments people gave me and then read them to myself when I was feeling less than. And the same is true and you can do this just mentally. You know, bring up, if you want a promotion, think of all the things that you've done to deserve one. My third tip comes directly out of a Jordan Peterson video, but he essentially said, that you have like a shadow self inside, this id, this wild, greedy aspect of the self, and we all have it. We all have essentially a wild animal, uh, a greedy little child that has no sense of what socially acceptable is. It just wants. And he says, you know, to some extent, you've got to accept that because although typically approaching the world from that perspective is not very healthy, understanding what that want is and then understanding a more tactful way to gratify that animal want in you for something, it can be very useful. It leads to a lot of being truthful with yourself where you otherwise might say, oh, I'm happy with my current salary. Oh, I'm happy with how my wife treats me. Maybe not. Maybe there's a part of you that is upset with that and wants to change that. And just because it's gross and rude and greedy, you don't want to look at it. But until you look at it and accept it, you're denying a big part of what it is to be human. And my fourth tip is to actually take action, to increase your own sense of self power and your power in other people's eyes. This stuff, this self-improvement stuff, can't just be a mental masturbation and a sort of uh, hoping. It has to be grounded in practice. My third sort of step to be more assertive is to increase empathy. And that has a couple parts, but first off, put yourself in the other guy's shoes. Just imagine what they want. You know, what does your kid want out of their dad? What does your boss want out of you as an employee? And really get a clear picture of the things that they want. Because until you do that, it's going to be very hard to ask for what you want. And the way that you ask might end up being accidentally offensive and accidentally running crosswise to their goals, in which case it's not going to go well. And the second aspect of being empathetic is when you're in conversation with them, actually ask them these things. Ask them what they want. Ask them um, you know, how they, you, they think that you should approach something. Because that curiosity and that empathy for where they're coming from makes people way more receptive to receiving your own input. This is that old Stephen Covey, how to uh, the seven habits of highly effective people, where he says, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And my last tip around being more assertive 
is to present your case well, present your message really, really tactfully and clearly, which means that your passion for whatever you're talking about should bleed through, should show through. There's something called the law of state transference, which means essentially what I feel, you feel and vice versa. So if you're passionate about something, when you're asking for a raise, to keep that metaphor, if your boss can feel your joy, your sense of like, I can do this and I deserve this because I've been working my ass off and I've, I've gotten results. If they can feel that, the chances that they themselves will go, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with this. The chances for that increase exponentially. Also use because statements. So there's a book called Influence by an author, Robert Cialdini, and in it, he describes six or seven psychological tools that we can use to influence one another, depending on which edition it is. But uh, one of those tools is to use because statements, where essentially you can say, hey, I think I deserve a raise because I have upsold more websites to our clients and our design for whatever it is. But that structure of saying, I want this or I believe this because tricks our brain in a weird way. It doesn't even really matter what the because is, as long as there's a structure there that shows that you've at least given some thought to having reasons behind what you do. Of course, you should aim to have good reasons for why you deserve a raise or why your girlfriend should clean up the house for you or whatever it is your dream is. But at the end of the day, just having that syntax of because is a good start. Another tip, be win-win, like always be win-win. If you're asking for something that requires someone else to lose, um, they're not gonna lose, <laughs> almost ever. So make sure that whatever you're proposing makes their life better as well as your life better. Another one is a classic sales technique called the double bind or giving people the illusion of choice. Ask for two outcomes, both of which are something that you would like. You know, this is the old, okay, you're gonna come pick up your new car on Thursday or Saturday. Um, if you ask for two options, both of which would be acceptable to you, you seem more reasonable. You give the other person more input and ownership and you still are achieving the outcomes you want. And the last one is something that Adam Galinsky calls the mama bear technique, the mama bear attitude, and it's essentially advocate for other people. If you want a different position in your company, explain why your different position makes other people's lives better, makes their jobs easier, makes the whole company work better. It's a much more noble position to say I'm doing this because it's in the group interest than it is to just say, I want this thing because of me. That's all I have for you today, but my question for you is, how are you going to speak up for yourself going forward? Leave a comment down below, I'd really love to know. Also, if you like this video, consider liking it and subscribing, it really helps the algorithm. And until next time, keep mastering your psychology and your physiology and keep moving forward.